Hello! I am the tiny man that lives inside of Photoshop. Photoshop is this really cool software that I like to use to make drawings and images and stuff. Like, uh, like this. And also maybe like uh, this. This. So uh, today I'm gonna draw one of these <laughs> pictures, and I don't know myself what it's gonna look like yet because I haven't drawn it. But uh, luckily, I have a, a portal to the future that you can use. So uh, here, you can. This is what we're making today. Wow! Look at that stuff. Look at that, huh? How are we going to make this, this thing? I don't know because I, I can't see what's there yet, but, but, but uh, let's, let's find out. Let's, uh, let's go and let's, uh, let's make a cool drawing in an hour or two. Oh, okay, I forgot. I should probably not cover the whole screen while doing this. So let's just... Shoot. There. That's more... That's more comfortable. So... When I draw something in Photoshop, I like starting in, in black and white because... Uh, because it's easier for my very specific workflow. Um, and then I usually start with making like, um, no matter what I start drawing, I start with making a frame. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's like on, I'm drawing on uh, paper or drawing on the computer. It's just so much, so much, easier to start from a, from a picture that has a frame on it already than starting from like a whole blank sheet of paper so now I'm just like just drawing up some these blue lines are called rulers and it's like uh, you can make uh, straight lines to to help you see where you want to draw or not um, yeah, when you when you start with like making a frame, or at least for me, like the, the hardest part when I make a picture is like when it, when I start out, you know, when it's it's totally white. There's nothing there at all. Um, and then you then you're like uh, really really scared of messing it up or doing it wrong or placing stuff at a stupid stupid place on the on the sheet of paper or maybe you have been like sometimes you know when you you draw something really nice and you're like oh yeah i'm gonna make this into a super cool drawing but then you realize like the super thing nice you drew then <laughs> the super thing you you drew is like crammed up in the corner and you actually wanted to be in the in the middle of the picture but you didn't think of that that early because you were just drawing something um, what I what I find is like if you start with drawing a frame you from the very beginning you you take some conscious choices about like how and where stuff should be placed and it's it just happens naturally when you have a frame you're like oh where where should I put something inside of this and then um, and then you end up with something that feels like a, like a proper composition in the end instead of just uh, instead of just doodles. So that's that's really my my very best trick is like start with drawing a frame and then then everything gets a lot easier. Hmm. I think I'm gonna start with making. Uh, Start with making a square. 
let's see. This is like now 39 minus 3. So it's um, 36 times. Ah, I'll just make a square and I'll make it fit afterwards. Um, I really like. I've been, I've been drawing a lot of stuff inside of squares lately. <laughs> Not just frames as rectangles, but like specifically squares because. Because um, I like to like copy and paste stuff and draw a small thing and then make it uh, duplicate it to like make patterns with it and stuff. And I mean, frames is really no squares is really the easiest, the easiest shape to do that because uh, they stack up really well, you know. Okay. Ah the. Hmm, maybe, yeah, I'll just draw a silly guy inside of a square, that's like my, if there's one thing that defines my style, it's like for eight years or something I've been drawing uncomfortable dudes crammed inside of squares, that's like my, my very favorite thing to draw. Um, I guess there's something about... Uh, feels a bit like a, like a puzzle, you know? You have the square and you know you need to fit the human shape inside of it. And then um, it's just this problem that you have to... this puzzle that you have to solve. And there's no like right or wrong answer, but it's very easy to see your brain is like super good at like recognizing recognizing uh, human shapes, you know. So uh, you can you can do it really wrong, and it uh, it doesn't have to actually look like an anatomically correct human. And even even then, you your brain goes uh, straight away like, ah, oh, yeah, that's a human. So you have a lot of like uh, wiggle room, uh, but also um, it's very it's. A body has a lot of like different things, you know, there's all these arms and legs and stuff, so you have still a lot, you have a lot of stuff to place and to make it feel like they're actually connected in some way. There's a, yeah, I, I usually just keep doodling stuff until I find it boring, like um, I have nothing more to learn from drawing this specific thing. And I guess that's just why I've been drawing um, drawing guys inside of squares for uh, for eight years now. It's like I uh, I'm still not fed up with it. I'm still like learning new stuff from from this small funny exercise. Uh, and I still use it in my compositions and drawings almost every day. Yes, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, it's starting to look like some uh, some guy. Mm. Yeah, we could add a bit more like shading to him. I mean, I'm gonna copy paste him a bunch of times, so it's it pays off to. Um, to make him a bit pretty from the go, you know? Uh, I really like to rather like draw a couple of things nicely and then copy paste them instead of spending a lot of time on every small corner of the picture. Um, and shading like this, I mean Right now it looks maybe a bit messy, like uh, it was kind of easier to see that it was a human before I'm adding these shades, but but I'm, I'm gonna add like colors and stuff to him and then and then uh, those colors is gonna, they're gonna make the image a lot more easily readable as well. So I might have 
Might as well mess him a bit up with all this stuff at this point. And it also like um, helps with uh, uh, defining the 3D shape of this character because of course he's just a 2D plane of pixels but I'm pretending that it's like a 3D guy in here, you know, and and then uh, yeah, right now the sh the shadows in black and white are maybe a bit too much, like it's um, making it harder to read the image. But uh, just you wait, and um, when we add some colors to this guy, it's I think it's gonna work out. Yeah, maybe we'll just add the colors right away actually hmm. I usually draw the whole picture in black and white and then start adding colors but I mean I'm gonna copy paste this guy anyway so if I if I make the colors before I before I copy paste him I'm gonna save some I'm gonna save a couple of seconds later you know and that's that's my fetish to like draw as efficiently as possible. Let's see. Yeah. And I'll just make the image colors. So I can start making colors. I use the CMYK color palette and not the RGB for uh, for very nerdy reasons, like how some of the blending modes work and stuff, and also like I make pictures now that I, I may wanna like make some art prints of it later, and then it's easier to work with, with print colors like in CMYK, compared to RGB, which is like how, how, images work on screen instead of print. It's all very complicated, but. Uh, you don't have to know all that, hopefully, to to play this video in the background while you're doing something more important, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're um, adding colors, weren't we? So... I'll just start by making him blue. Because blue is the bluest color. Yeah, I usually just work in like two colors, like this blue or cyan. And then I add uh, uh, magenta. And then I put these layers to like multiply, so where it's both cyan and magenta, it becomes this dark blue purple thing. So it's kind of like working with two black and white images, one that is blue and one that is magenta on top of each other, and then where they mix, the, it becomes this third color. And, uh, and then at the end, I switch up cyan and magenta to something that's a bit more pretty, but it's easier for the workflow if we just, if I just, uh, if I just do magenta and cyan for now because that's like the the color channels is called here it's like cmyk stands for cyan magenta yellow and black and if you were if you use that, those like primary print colors the whole way through you have a bit more options of like how to how to do silly stuff with it yeah okay so now we've got the blue guy and then uh, then I guess we'll add some of this magenta on top. Yeah. I'll just make a selection here as well, so we only draw inside the square. It's gonna save us some time later. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna actually start with the whole thing in magenta, and then I'm gonna draw, draw it white instead, and like make, make some of it, uh, some of it brighter. So that's also one of the things I really like about working digitally. It's like there's no difference between adding color and removing color. It's just 
it's just the same thing and as you as I you can see when I work here I I constantly switch between like yeah now I'm adding uh, magenta and now I'm adding white and that's like here on on the on the color palette on the side you have like uh, the foreground and background color and if you with the brush or pencil tool uh, press X on your keyboard now I'm pressing X and you can see like it switches between them and that's like a super fast way to to draw with both like now I'm drawing in white and I press X and I draw with you don't have to like flip your pen around and use the eraser or whatever it's just like you have your finger on the X key the whole time and then you just then it's like very natural to just uh, Go with the flow and uh, and add and remove stuff from uh, from the layer you're working on very efficiently. And uh, it's going to become even more apparent during this video, but I uh, <laughs> the, I just always try to work as efficient as possible. I'm not sure if it's like the efficiency in itself that I find fun or it's like uh, me trying to draw as little as possible because I'm just fooling myself and think into like thinking I like this or maybe it's like um, no I think it's mostly like I, I really like when I feel smart and when I work efficiently I feel like I'm clever and that's my favorite feeling in the whole world feeling clever guess that's why I'm making a video into internet to sh right now to show you how I do drawings as well so I can show you how how clever I am you know hmm um, I think it's a bit sharp with like both the the blue and magenta this way I'll try and make a make a selection of just the, the white in this layer and I'll remove it and put it on its own layer instead Blop. so now the white is on its own layer and I'm gonna well let's put the other one back on and now I'm gonna like blur Gaussian blur I'm gonna blur that white, so now it's like the stuff I just drew. I'm like softening it up, so it becomes just just a different kind of shading, you know, than what we have in the blue layer. Maybe we should do something more with the blue layer as well, or maybe add something on top of this. Hmm. Oh, I have a cool idea. What if we? Take this blue and no, we'll put it to screen. This is like the opposite of multiply, and then um, and we'll add what's called a layer style to these pixels um, we'll try with the inner glow a inner glow that's magenta that would be pretty cool let's see yeah This has to be a lot smaller. So now we're like making a, we're making like a dark shading inside the blue stuff. It's like now it's nothing, and then it's growing. So it's maybe it should be like that's also pretty cool. It's just some, some weird stuff. Yeah. Without, yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think maybe we should add some 
goofy lines as well. Um, yeah. Should they be in the blue or the magenta? I think they're gonna be in the magenta layer, so I feel like add on top of this just some uh, so magenta lines. Yeah. That's like also on top of like the um, just shading stuff to make it look more 3D. I also just like almost like a, a 3D matrix or something, you know, you just uh, add like lines that uh, defines the shape you're pretending it is, you know. This isn't a flat surface, it's the arm of a guy. And now it's like rounded, like it's sticking out towards us. And also, I get to do some lines. Um, yeah. See, I'm not really precise with these. Maybe I'll erase it a bit, or maybe it doesn't matter. I mean, this is going to be like a small square guy that's going to be duplicated a lot of times. So it's important to not care about those details that nobody actually looking at the picture cares about, you know? You shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, spend a lot of time on like managing your own anxiety about oh what if this isn't good enough and you should rather just uh, present it the way it actually is and also I'm kind of I don't like like sketching and spending time erasing the sketch and stuff I like when when everything you do ends up a part of the final image because then it's like nothing nothing you made has been wasted everything that you spent time on became a part of the final image and it feels like a bit of a more of course it's faster approach but it's also like um it's nice to have some imperfections and it gives it a lot more like personality and just makes it feel like it's drawn by a human even though even though it's drawn by uh, a tiny man who lives inside of photoshop um, yeah okay now we need to add someone on his face as well maybe those should be a bit thinner Trying to like just define the shapes of the other shades as well with these lines. And I mean, there's no right and wrong when you do this. It's like you, you, you define what's right and wrong. You define the actual shape of it by drawing these lines. So it's not like, I mean, I try to conform to how, how a 3D guy squished inside the square would actually work but uh, 3d guys aren't squished inside squares so you kind of make up your own rules as you go you know yeah that's a dude um hmm let's just squish him together to one layer and then let's bring up all these lines again. I want to like make him like inside the frame I'm having there. I'm gonna have like a lot of I'm making a frame of this guy again, like uh, um, just uh, he needs to be a bit smaller. But I also need to like do the math. How big need I to scale him to make him fit inside this? If I draw a selection rectangle and make a new ruler, it kind of snaps to the middle of it. So I can find like the middle and then so that's divided by four divided by eight. Yeah. I guess that's what is gonna be his his size. There. Okay. And 
dann dann das Duplicate next to him do it again all four this time make like one more copy of of one of them so I so I have when I merge everything together now because now I'm gonna take all these guys and schmuck. control E to merge layers by the way um, I guess should be down here as well and then uh, let's see how how many guys do we actually have space for in uh, Dudes, is it space for in the in the short? So it's like one, two, three, and then some. Hmm. Okay, you know what? Oh. We'll rotate him, and then we'll make three. Make them into one layer, and then we'll just uh, cheat to make him not a square anymore. Yeah, that looks trippy as hell. Um, I mean, it should work on like the border outside of this. See now that I drew it a bit differently compared to my rulers. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'll just I'll just start over since I'm working in colors now anyway. Yeah, just make this whole layer like so. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do some copy pasting on the outer layer as well. So I, I'll delete some of these rules that I don't need anymore. And now I'm just gonna make like this one fourth of the frame, and then I'll rotate it to to fit the other parts as well. Mm. I really like making these like intestine frames. Mm. Maybe if we'll make that in magenta outside this. Or maybe blue actually. Yeah. This is like one of my favorite pastimes lately. Just, just making this. Uh, it's like in the middle between those like Greek wavy patterns, and just instead of cramming a whole human inside a confined 
rectangle I just I just like make one long intestine 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 yes you have to sorry for my uh, my shitty English but uh, I can't really concentrate on drawing and speaking nice English at the same time so then it's then it's my then it just have to be my shitty English you know So yeah, I could sit like this all day almost and just Yeah, it's another like small puzzle, you know, you you have this intestine that needs to keep going but also needs to fill out the whole space and then you try to not repeat yourself in like how you how you make it twirl around but also you never have to it's like playing snake, you know, it never has to end up stuck in a corner you always have to have to think one move ahead or at least you have to do it when I, I usually do this on paper but now I can just control set and erase and stuff so this is this is almost this is almost cheating um, but don't tell anyone and then I won't tell anyone that you're sitting watching a tiny guy inside Photoshop drawing instead of uh, doing something more something you should be doing you know but or maybe maybe you're just watching you know while actually doing something maybe I'm just playing in the background that would that would probably be more ideal that would that would give me a better conscious con if you're like uh, you know stuck inside because there's a virus killing the whole planet or something like that and uh, you just uh, need some company then um, then maybe and you run out of like uh, Bob Ross painting videos to watch you know then I'm the third best option between watching paint dry and uh, something else I have I can't finish that joke while doing this mm, yeah so so this is like just almost done let's see what did I do over here yeah I can do the same make a tiny face inside I mean when in doubt or when anything really make a tiny face the face if you ask me it's like the same way with bodies and faces you know our human brain is so is so fine-tuned to like seeing faces everywhere so it doesn't really have to look like a face if there's two dots in the line it looks like a face so that's a very forgiving thing to draw as well because no matter what you do it's it's close enough to look like a face the problem is when you try to draw like a realistic face you know because our brain is really good at seeing when something is a bit wrong as well. Um, but if you just draw an unrealistic, stupid, ugly face, then your brain is like, yep, that's an unrealistic, stupid, ugly face, no matter what it looks like. So it's also very efficient, I guess. Um, now I'll uh, 
duplicate this. Um, yeah, I don't need to re rotate it. I must flip it actually to make it fit. So there, oh, there. We got half of the border, and then I duplicate it again. Transform, flip horizontal. No, that's wrong. Flip vertical, and then. I got the whole border. Mm. Yeah, it should maybe be the other way around actually. Just excuse me, I'll make this like that. Uh, Yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. Because then it's like the the outer limit of these guys are black, you know. So then it helps that the border connecting to it is black as well, and it looks like there was some plan to this all along. Um, yeah, I I don't really like this this. Uh, hard line on the outside it looks a bit too digital compared to all the all the hand drawn stuff so I'll just uh, quickly go over it and make it look like it's and draw as well. Opa. Yeah. And if you're like asking yourself now, why did he spend like all that fancy tricks? to not having to draw the border all the way around with this one boring line. No, that's, that is gonna like do properly the whole way around instead of some copy pasting. Um, that's a good question. Um, I guess it's about like how long it would take to do it like the copying and pasting and doing that correctly compared to just doing the manual way. And in, s in some cases, you know, it, won't take that many more seconds for me to just draw this one line around the border and then there's like one less element at least that's actually mirrored and actually different the whole way around so it makes it look a bit more hand-drawn let's see there's like there's like this tiny blue line around so that needs to get rid of if we select inverse and then Expand by like two pixels and delete. Yeah. Um, there should be some stuff in here as well. I'll just. I'll figure that out later. What was I thinking? Yeah, maybe that should actually. Maybe that's better. Yeah. That's better actually. I'm sorry if I don't explain everything I do, it's just uh, I need to make some tutorials as well to actually learn people how to do this stuff, but for now I'm just showing you how I work in general, you know? And then uh, I guess I'll make the tutorials later. Um, yeah. If we on this layer add like an outer glow, that could be cool. Or inner maybe. No, 
that doesn't really work. I'm gonna like uh, add some details to this squiggly line going around the around the border. Don't mind that it looks weird as for now. It's gonna look cool in a second. Yeah. So it's like the blue is like bleeding out from the corner. Mm. Softer probably. Yeah. It's pretty nice. So now like instead of it being just blue in there it's like this this gradient thing pretty cool but if we have like a inner flow of white Doing something wrong here, let's see. That layer is multiplying on top. Then multiply it. Yeah, there we go. That was the weirdest thing I was looking for, you know. Hmm. Okay. So now, this is our silly picture. Starting to have a lot of silliness. Um, guess we need to fill the middle with something. Up the maybe maybe a triangle. I usually don't make triangles because squares are easier, but Inside there, like we have one, one thing in the center, and then we have like the same thing flipped in each of the 
each of the sides. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, let's start with the side stuff. So I'm gonna draw something in this corner and then and then flip it to the other side. Oops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe it should be something like totally abstract actually. None of this looking like something silliness. Let's just let's just do something. Let's see what it ends up like, you know, because like this whole drawing is improvised at some level with me not having like a defined plan of where it's going, but it's mostly me drawing stuff and know very well how to draw like these guys inside squares and whatever that I've done a hundred times before but sometimes it's nice to just let even more loose and not just make shapes that feels like you feel like you want to make that shape like ah oh, it's nice to make some some lines that are sharp in the edge and then goes out to this Bam! Thingy. Mm. Some triangles up here, maybe? Why not? Yeah. Of course we are. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so what's like interesting to add in the blue layer on top of this then? Maybe like uh, maybe something like that feels a lot more organic. Like this is very like straight lines based. Maybe something more Oh, it's getting brighter, so it should rather. I should rather start from the top. Just make this this texture from. Oops. Well, it's a start at least. I'm not loving it so far, but the nice way I usually go about this is just I add more and more stuff on top of it until I like it. It's like yeah, you know when you sit and draw on paper at some point you're like, ah oh, fuck, I've been adding too much details and now I'm just making it worse by adding more. And there's nothing I can do about it because I can't like erase or whatever. But digitally you have like so many, you never have to be afraid of adding too much stuff. You can always just, just go back to where you were and like, or make another layer on top of it. Or something like that. Yeah, let's see. If we... if we add some gradient, maybe. If it's. Um... Yeah, it could go back to blue down there, actually. Then maybe the other way on top it goes to it 
second stream again time. It's a bit. I'm just making like, yeah. Before I added this, there's like the field is or the whole thing is pretty bright, and then. Now I'm like, oh, it's not that pretty yet, so I need to add more stuff on top. So then I like added these gradients to make it a bit darker. And then it's, then it's easier for me to just pile on even more stuff. At some point, it's probably gonna look nice, I hope. And then it'll be like, wow, how did you plan out this weird shape I've never seen before? And then I can be like, it's a secret. And then I can't keep my secret and I'll say, I didn't plan anything, haha. <laughs> It's gonna be a good moment in my life to tell my fictional grandchildren about. Yeah, I think these again are a bit too sharp. I think I'll try to blur this level, this layer as well. All the stuff I'm making blurry, I'm gonna make it pretty in another way by the end. I'm gonna like make it half toned as it's called, like instead of blur, it's gonna be like different size of dots and lines and stuff. Yeah. You'll see it when I get to it. Like just, just accept that this looks like a total mess for the moment. And trust me that it's that it's going to be prettier at a later stage. Yeah, so now I'm making a layer that I'm going to do that layer style thing where you can make like uh, the edges glow and stuff like that. So it's actually not going to be white where I put white at all. It's going to be transparent, all this white, but then I'm going to use it as a as like the stencil or the mask for the thing I'm going to add next. Yeah, like that. I'm gonna set it to multiply, and when you multiply something white, it uh, becomes totally transparent. And then, yeah, wow, and the glow with white was actually pretty cool. Oh, you know what? What if it's not white, but we have like one sign and one magenta and then we'll flip them around. Let's see. Oh yeah. Then this layer should actually be screen instead. Don't mind me. can push like one of them to the side and we get this 
even more details from the colors missing each other a bit. Yeah. Oh. That looks weird. Mission accomplished. Okay. I'll duplicate this thing. Um, flip it horizontal and put it over here. Yeah. So then for the triangle thing in the middle. Mm, or you know what? Maybe I'll chicken out of making a triangle thing there actually. I mean I've already made two two tri triangle things right now, so what if we what if we define this thing further by like making some lines the other way as well? Then it can be like this diamond shape in the middle. And then some other stuff in this squares underneath. Yeah. That can be cool. So maybe these should be not as noisy as everything else, like we need. Or maybe that should be the center, like the center is the only quiet place. Or these these two could be like these could be like a bit more quiet and dark and then the center shape can be a bit more quiet and bright. That can be cool. Mm. Yeah, maybe we should go on with like some bit abstract things with this, like since that's kind of what's framing the centerpiece now. Um, something abstract but simpler I guess. We'll try the blobs again because it didn't really work on the other the other thing. It's like it's like you're painting a rock, and you're just uh, defining where it has a bit of a rugged shape, you know, this rock, and then you like just define where the sunshine actually hits it, and it's not not like if it was a perfect circle and it's this defined shape. No, it's like this. It's mostly on the top, but then it like fades off as smaller dots. Yeah. So maybe we could. Oh, maybe we can. Uh... Okay, I have a really silly idea. Maybe it should be my cat, actually. Outside, let's say five pixels. Oh, it needs to be more. Ten. And then we'll have another stroke outside at twenty pixels, which is just this color. And then outside at thirty uh, pixels. Yeah, we'll go back to we'll go back to magenta and then I'll just keep adding strokes here and like uh, every other being that dark purple thing and other every other being magenta and everyone being uh, the no ten pixels thicker than the last one. And then we'll get this 
a silly pattern. That's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, and then I'll just add. Yeah, because you can see now, no matter where I draw, it bec it becomes this. This pattern just shows up around it, you know. Uh, so I'll just uh, to make it fit the whole thing. I'll just dot in some more dots, and the lines around it will appear automatically. Yeah. Brighter on top. I think this this shape should have a darker frame. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. Starting to become a a proper mess. Luckily, like the last couple of steps is gonna clean it up a bit, so it doesn't look this. But I guess you have seen the finished image, so you already know. I don't need to reassure you that it's gonna look a bit nicer in the end because you guys have already seen that. If I manage to make it a bit nicer in the end, of course, maybe I'll. Maybe I'll fail miserably. That probably makes for good internet content anyway. Something to the edge of it as well, maybe. Mm. Yeah, maybe the thing in the middle will be like the one thing where I don't separate the colors that much. It will actually be this this grayish thing when both of them are on top of each other. Yeah, what if we put that, but these two are screen instead. Oh, makes them look a bit off center, is this? Yeah. Mm, should be more blue or more pink, I think it should be more pink. Or maybe like upper corners are more pink and the lower corners are more blue Hmm. 
still kind of feels like it needs something. How about we make... Some... Some white lights. Uh, yeah, no, we'll make them white. I'm doing more copying and pasting because yeah or what if okay now I have an idea what if this part is set to screen and it's like that and then we duplicate it and put it on the opposite as well yeah and then we'll do for Put blue for the other teams. So it's like there. Duplicate again. Oh, I need to like so. Make it cyan. As well. Yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're talking shitty English. The only thing I don't like is like the the hard edge between them. So I'll just make uh, the very center line white instead. We kind of need something for these, for these small things up here. Let's see. Could just be something. Okay, that's fine. Hmm. Okay, I'll just save this document. And then uh, we'll start like working with halftone patterns and colors and stuff. So now actually I'll just flatten the whole thing and then save it as a new document. So I st like still have the still have the one with all the layers, but now for the next part I don't really need the layers and Photoshop is running a bit slow because I'm recording at the same time. So I'll just make this new document without them. So yeah, the thing like now is here you have all the cyan pixels, and here you have all the magenta ones, like the blue and the pink one. Like, they are separated in a very like mathematical way inside the program. Um, you can say it's like two black and white images on top of each other, that have just been given the cyan color and the magenta color, because that's how printing works. You like make every color you print on top of each other is kind of a grayscale thing that's just been given another paint than grey and then you put them on top of each other and it becomes a full color image. So now I'll try to do like a bit different 
kind of halftone patterns on these two colors. So for the, yeah, they're pretty similar. I mean, the biggest difference is like in the in the small dudes around the corner. Where on this is really sharp, on the cyan is sharp, and the magenta it's blurry. I think for the cyan, I'll do like a wavy line halftone to make that work. Uh, I'll need to. Yeah, we'll go in the Cyan channel. And just for now, we'll make the image grayscale, deleting everything else, but we'll go back in history later. Distort. So now I'm using like some of the really, really old filters in Photoshop. Uh, they are not pretty at all. They don't have any preview, so you kind of just. Well, this one has a small preview here. But for the most part, you just need to like test it and see if it did the thing you wanted to. But like these old filters, they're very nice because they're very mathematically simple, so you can kind of uh, get a grasp on what they're doing mathematically, and then it's easier to combine with other things. So now I'm making the whole picture wavy, and now I'm gonna. Give the whole picture these these lines instead of it being like going grayscale from black to gray to white. It will just be black and white pixels, but then it'll be these lines with different thickness depending on how depending on how much darkness there should be in the image at that point. Then I make lines in the same direction that the, as the waves go. I did something wrong. I think they should be a bit thinner as well. That means I need to up the frequency. Yeah, that should be zero. Hmm. Maybe like this? Yeah. We'll do that. Then I'll just copy and paste this and like control set. And then in the Cyan channel I'll paste this. Oh, I selected the wrong layer. There we go. And now I'm, instead of the picture being wavy I'm gonna make the lines wave instead. So the trick is that we can do the same wave filter over it again. Uh, but if we if we first flip it, no, not vertically. I think it's horizontally. If we first flip it horizontally, I think it should be. Then every pixel comes in the opposite direction for the wave filter, so then it cancels itself. Uh, no, I was wrong. It should be vertically. Image, flip vertical, filter, distort, no, wave. There. So then I kind of did the opposite map to it uh, to cancel out the waves, but since I did the um, lines between doing the waves the one way and the other, now like instead of it being grayscale, it's just this different thickness lines that also have the wavy the waviness of them so that's pretty efficient and cool and stuff and we need to flip it back because now it's actually it's actually upside down that's the way it is oh and then we're gonna do something yeah, we can do something a bit simpler for the magenta filter. We'll just do a regular, the actual halftone people think of when they hear halftones, which is just round dots. They should maybe be a bit smaller. Yeah, this is what most people think of when they hear halftone. It's like how stuff is actually printed. That's like, you can't, you can't print with weaker magenta ink, you know, so when they mix them to colors, it's just it's just dots of different sizes. Um, oh, 
Oder flip das mal so. Let's see. Yeah. So now, with a couple of like filters and stuff, there's there's a lot more details to the whole thing. Let's see if we can see it before and after. Yeah, before, after. And that's like no no drawing done on that step. It's just adding uh, the right filters in the right order to get the um, the image we want and the nice thing about this is like it's it's still separated in you know I can I can it's still separated in the two print colors so I can like make artist prints of this and stuff with just printing these two in silk screen or risograph or whatever on top of each other but now that we have like all that figured out it's time to get away from these cyan and magenta colors which are actually pretty ugly so uh, make a white layer on top here and then I'll take the magenta make a selection of the channel and just paste it there so now I'm basically just grabbing the image data that's in the channel so I'm putting it in separate layers instead and then if you set them to multiply it works the same way as with channels with the colors adding on top of each other and um, yeah then it's really easy maybe this is the best way to try out a bit uh, try out a bit uh, different colors to it. Let's see. That's a bit more space. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. Oh, actually not. That's better. Um, but, yeah. Okay, we'll start with uh, the blue one, because that's the ugliest. And I'll just should probably be a bit more green and a bit more chill. Then we'll yeah. Now the pink is way too yeah. It probably needs to be a bit darker actually. The green color, a bit more blue maybe as well. It's like it's. It needs to be one warm and one dark color for this thing to work. Like since that's what I was starting, I just I just moved them a bit away from like process magenta and process cyan because that's especially on screen it's it's really it's really hard on the eyes. And also I've been drawing with these two colors in Photoshop for a lot of years now and getting pretty bored of them, even though they're super nice and efficient in the in the drawing process itself. Uh, yeah, that's that's more colors I don't hate at the moment. Yeah, maybe we should uh, save this document and call it a day. Um, yeah, or maybe I should like yeah. Let me just jump even smaller in the corner and we'll look a bit at the drawing itself before I. Uh, before I log off. So you can see like, even though we've just been sitting here for one hour and 20 minutes, we've, we've made this super intricate thing that you'd imagine would take a lot more, you know? And it's even like ready to become a two color art print that you could sell for money and stuff. Or just print out on your computer. If you print it out, I would actually suggest not um, not changing it from process science, process magenta, because then you have like the printer colors in your printer or whatever. Uh, they don't mix at all, you know. It's just the colors they have put on top of each other, one and the other. And then it becomes very sharp and not like, you know how it is when color images and printers, they're usually really bad, but that's because it mixes all four colors to, to make the colors you want. But if you're rather play with the limitations of the printer and only use like cyan and magenta and then maybe yellow on top, 
uh, as a third color if you want three colors like this. Uh, then, then you'll end up with a with an image that's uh, even though it's printed on a cheap printer, it looks really nice because you don't have done all that that mixing. So yeah, this will probably look pretty horrible on uh, YouTube because uh, YouTube don't like patterns like this, especially when they're moving. But uh, yeah, this is. Uh, this is uh, stuff you can make in Photoshop in just more than an hour if you if you're just as much into drawing or uh, just as much as you're into drawing, you're into pushing buttons and having fun. So, oh fuck! I hope that not has ruined everything. We'll see. At least. Uh, <laughs> wow, fuck, I hope, I hope there's audio on this thing. Well, um, thank you for watching, it's been a pleasure to not draw just by myself, but with uh, you here as well. I hope, uh, I hope it was fun to watch this thing, and uh, if you liked it, uh, let me know, and maybe I'll, I'll make a couple of these more. I, mean, I have a green screen now, so I need to do something with it to excuse the effort. Um, Goodbye.